the factored form, and then the factored form is, if you're talking about a monomial, is a, a list of the prime factors of the coefficient. And then the variables broken down. Okay, and who remembers prime factorization and making factor trees? Anyone remember factor trees? Okay, one person remembers factor trees. Okay, so that's the easiest way to do these is to create a factor tree. Still the easiest. 20 is 2 times 10, and 10 is 2 times 5, and as soon as you get to the point where you can't divide anything anymore, these are your prime factors. Okay, so those are prime. And so what we do to factor 20x to the third y squared completely, I'm going to list my prime factors. And then I'm going to break down my variables. x to the third is 3x's. And y squared is 2y's. And this is factored completely. For this part, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, if we go to 34, that's 2 times 17. I can't break that down any further. So those are my prime factors. So... 34x to the 4th, y to the 3rd is going to be 2 times 17 times 4x's and 3y's. Okay, so you're just, you're breaking it into its smallest pieces, the smallest pieces you can. Okay, uh, negative 52. We're going to take into account that negative. So it's negative 1 times 52. Okay, and then we factor the 52, which is 2 times 26, which is 2 times 13, and I cannot break it down any further. So that's going to be negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 13, and then there are two A's and one B. Factor is the largest number that divides into two numbers. Okay, so you've got greatest common factor and you have least common multiple. Greatest common factor is the biggest number that goes inside the two numbers we're talking about. So there are two ways to find these. Um, Like, I can look at 6 and say, okay, that's 2 times 3, and then 18 is 2 times 9, or 3 times 6. Oh, 6 is 6 times 1. You know, like, I can do the factors and just kind of figure out what they multiply to. And then find the biggest one that goes into both, which is 6. Okay. Okay. And then I look at my variables. So, so we find the largest number. And then we look at our largest, oh, sorry, not largest, smallest exponent on matching variables. Okay, so when I look at this, 6 is the largest number that goes into both 6 and 18. I have an x here, but no x is here. So x won't be a factor. I have three y's here, but I only have one y here. So only one y can go into both of them. And then I have no z's and I have a z, so z is not going to be both. So while this has three y's, this one only has one, so only one y will go into them. Okay, so that's method one. Um, I'm going to show you another way to do this. Okay, so b. 
Okay, if I do a factor tree for 12, I get 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. So I get 2 times 2 times 3 times A times A times B times B times C. And then if I do 18 AB to the third, that's going to be 2 times 3 times 3 times A times A times B times B times B. Yeah. It's 3 times 3. You always look at the ends of the 18 became 2 times 9, and then 9 became 3 times 3. And so the ends of the branches are the numbers that you use. Okay, so now I've completely factored these. They have a 2 in common. They have a 3 in common. They have 1a in common. And they have two b's in common. So I take the numbers that they had in common and I multiply those back together. So a 2, a 3, an a, and then two b's. And that would be the greatest common factor. So this is another way that you can do it. So we can either find the factors and figure out which the largest number is, and then look at the exponents on the matching letters and pick the smallest exponent. Or we can factor everything all out, which this, for 12 and 18, that might not have been something that you needed to do, but if you have really large numbers that you might not recognize the common factors or all of the factorization of, this is a nice method. Like if I told you what's the greatest common factor between 128 and 356. I don't even know that off the top. I mean, I'd have to sit there and factor it all out to figure it out. So then that's when I would use this method. So small numbers, I tend to use this method. Oops. Small numbers, I tend to use this method. Larger numbers, I tend to use this method. Just, but they both work. Okay, if I look at 11 and 21, do they have any number in common that will go into them? I mean, does anything go into 11? No. And 21 is 3 times 7, but it doesn't matter because nothing goes into 11, and 11 does not go into 21, so they have no numbers in common, and that's okay. When that happens, we start just looking at the variables. This one has two A's, and this one has one A's, so... G C F is going to have an A, and they each have one B, so it's going to be A B, and that's acceptable too, just to have variables. Um, I happen to know the greatest common factor between 30 and 50, just off the top of my head, but I'm going to move forward as if I, I don't know it, and I'm going to go ahead and factor them, okay? So 30 is 2 times 15, which is 3 times 5, and 50 is 2 times 25, which is 5 times 5, um, which would make 30 2 times 3 times 5, and then I'd have 3 Q's, 2 R's, and a T, and 50 is going to be 2 times 5 times 5. I have two Q's, an R, and a T. My 2's match. I have one set of 5's that match. I have two sets of Q's that match. A different color. I have an R, And I have a T. Okay. And at this point, even if you factored these, you don't necessarily have to write it all out. I could factor these and go this way and say, okay, I have twos that match. And I have fives that match. I have a yeah. When you put the numbers into the row, like eight plus one is just two, three, and five. Mm -hmm. Which I 
and we're reading our complaint. So why did you just choose to read that 15 as your bullet count? 15 became 3 times 5. So when I factor it, it no longer exists. So why did you do it today? Because 30 was 2 times 15, so the 2 didn't get factored into okay, anything. So the 2 is still here. Okay. The 15 goes away when you make it 3 and 5. Mm -hmm. And so really the 30 went away when I made it 2 and 15. And then the 15 went away when I made it 3 and 5. Okay. And here the 50 goes away when I do 2 and 25. And mm -hmm. the 25 goes away when I do 5 times 5. Um, so, like, you, I can write them all out like I did the expand. This is called expanded. I can write them out expanded and find the matching pairs this way, or I can look between the two and say, okay, here's a two that matches, here's a five that matches, and then I can say, okay, there's three here and two here, so I'm going to have two of them because it's always on the exponents, so it's always the least amount. There's two R's and one R, so I can only have one, and then one T each. So either way, I get the same thing. I get two five, two Q's, an R, and a T. So two fives, or sorry, two and five make 10, Q squared, R, T. This would be the greatest common factor between 30, Q to the third, R squared, T, and 50, Q squared, R, T. And so it's still called the distributive property. If you multiply in or divide out, it's still the distributive property. It's just backwards from what we're used to. We're used to seeing 3 times x plus 4 and getting 3x plus 12. This is the step we've been doing. Now we're going to go, oh, I left out that parenthesis. That's not nice. Now we're going to go from 3x plus 12 to 3 times x plus 4. So we're doing the same. We're going backwards. So what you want to do is we need to find the GCF for both terms. Okay, so that's our first step, or, or all three terms, is to find the GCF. Okay, so when I look at 27y squared and 18y, if I have to factor them, I will. Um, can you guys think of the number that goes into both 27 and 18, largest number? Nine. nine. Okay, so I've got a nine. And then I have one, two y's and one y, so nine y is going to be my GCF. Okay, that's step one. Okay. Step two is you pull it out of the parentheses or pull it out in front of a set of parentheses. Okay, so I'm going to take that 9y and I'm going to put it in front of a parenthesis. And then the last step is each term inside, or let's say inside. Okay, so each term gets divided by the GCF. So what I do is I say, okay, I have this 9y, I pulled it out. If I take 9y away from 27y squared, what do I have left? Well, 27 divided by 9 is 3. I had two y's, I took one of them away, so I have one left. 18 divided by 9 is 2. I had one y, I took it away, so I have no y's left. And this is factored. If it's been factored properly, you actually found the greatest common factor, then these two things will not have anything in common anymore. So 3 and 2 don't divide by the same thing, and this one has a y and that one doesn't. There's no nothing else that they have in common at that point. You took their commonality away from them. If you didn't, if you didn't know the 9, Right, I'd come over to the side and I would do 27 really quick and I'd get 27 would become 3 times 9 and then 9, 9 would become 3 times 3 and you can cross those out if that will help you 
and then um, 18 would be 2 times 9, and then 9 would be 3 times 3, and I'd say, okay, what do I have in common? I have it 1, 3, and then I have another 3, and then those don't have anything in common. The nice thing about this method is I pull out 3 times 3 to get my 9, and look what's left behind. That gives me that number. Anything that gets left behind becomes my like other factor. And then over here, this 2 got left behind, and it became that number. So that's a nice method, too, because it gives you both at the same time. But again, it's, it's, if you see 9, then you just go with it. If you don't see it, do the factoring and find it. I could have used these two threes with those two threes. I just need to find any matching numbers. So um, let me pause this. Try to find the GCF between these two. When I look at this, I say, oh, it ends in zero, so it'll divide by 10. So 10 times 36, and then 10 is 2 times 5, and 36 is 6 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3, and And then, stop doing that. And then 6 is 2 times 3. Wow, I'm having... It is. Okay, so I split that that way. And then I go here and I go, oh, that's going to be 2 times 120. And then 120 is 2 times 60. And 60 is 2 times 30. And 30 is 2 times 50. 15 and 15 is 3 times 5. And you see how they're kind of just all over the place? I'm going to just circle everything in yellow that is the end of a branch. Okay? So these are the numbers I have to choose from. Okay? Now I can pair up this two with this two or this two or this two or this two. It doesn't matter which. So that gives me a 2. And then I can pair up this 5 with that 5. And I can pair up this 2 with any of these three 2's. It doesn't matter which. I just kind of tend to go in order. Um, but you don't have to go in any specific order. This 3, I'm going to put with that 3. Um, this 2, I'm going to put with that 2. And then I have a 3 here and a 2 here that don't match up. That was the green 2. So these guys get left behind. So they don't know if they don't match up. Yeah, if they don't match up, they're not part of the greatest common factor. And then if I multiply all this back together, I have 2 times 5 is 10, times 2 is 20, times 3 is 60, times 2 is 120. That's my GCF. Now, if this was something like that, and I was trying to factor it, I would pull my GCF out, and then 3 got left behind here and 2 got left behind here. And that's what would be factored. So I could, if I use the factor trees, I can find it that way. And let's say, hypothetically, it wasn't 240. Let's say it was 1,200. And the only difference is when I got down to the bottom, I'd have another 5. Okay. I could still pull out that 120, so it would be so 360x plus 1200y. And I still have that 3x, but instead of just a 2 left behind here, I'd have a 2 and a 5, so I'd have 10. So whatever gets left behind would get multiplied back together and stay inside the parentheses. Does that help? Okay. Think of it this way. If you pair up you get to go out on a date. So you get to come outside. If you don't have anybody to pair up with, you get left home. And so you stay inside. 
that helps. I have a 4 and an 8 and a 2. What's the largest number that will divide into 4 and 8 and 2? 2. So I'm going to pull out my GCF. There's a 2. I have 2 A's, 1 A, and 1 A. So how many A's can I pull out? 1. And then I have 1 B, 2 B's, and 1 B. So how many B's can I pull out? 1. Okay. So this is what I can pull out. And negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Okay. I had two A's. I took one away, so I have one left. I had one B. I took it away, so I have no B's left. Then I come to the next one. I have negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. I had one A. I took it away, so the A's are gone. I had two B's. I took one away, so there's one B left. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. I took away both the A and the B, so there's nothing left. If it's separated by a plus or a minus, it's an individual term. It's by itself. And so you don't look at this as being four A's all together. You have, or four B's all together. You have one B, two B's, one B. Separately. So... Um, was it Frank, Mary, and Joey? Frank has one, B, Mary has two, Joey has one. And A's, Frank has two A's, Mary has one A, Joey has one A. And Frank, Mary, and Joey will all divide by two. So I, when I take the two A's, or the two, the one A and the one B away, because that's what they had in common, what do they have left? Frank had two A's, I took one of the A's away, so he's left with one of the A's. He had one B, but I took it away, so the B's went away, because I took his, his only B, I took it. And then Mary had an A, but I took it, so it's gone. But she had two B's, I took one of them, so she has one left. And then Joey only had one A and one B, and I took them both away from him, so he's got nothing left. So if Joey didn't have a B, I couldn't do a B. Exactly. Okay, they have to have, it's what they all have in common. And then whatever they have in common, you take it away from them. Because we're mean. Yeah, we're, we're very mean that way. So, like, look at this one. We have 15W and 3V. So what do 15 and 3 have in common? Close. 3. Yeah, 5 times 3 is 15. So they have the 3 in common. You, I knew where you were going. Just it was, So they both can divide by 3. So 3 is my GCF. They don't have any letters in common. This one has a W, this one has a V, so I can't take any letters away from them, so I'm just going to take the 3 away. When I do that, 15 divided by 3 is 5, and the W gets to stay because I didn't take it. And 3 divided by 3 is 1, and the V gets to stay because I, so I didn't take it. We don't usually write the, the 1, so really it should look like this. But if you put the 1 in there, that's I don't care, that's fine. Okay, here we have... Um, it'll equal what you had. Yes, yeah, that's a check. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a check. I can take this and if I distribute it back in, I'll get what I started with. And if I were to distribute this back in... 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. A times A is A squared. B, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. A, B squared. 2 times 1 is 2, A, B. So I, if I multiply it back in, I'll get what I started with. So you can use that to check yourself. Okay, um, on this one, we have Penelope. Yeah. This is the answer. Yeah, and then this would be a check. Okay, um, so we've got Penelope and Rudolfo and somebody give me a ridiculous name. Okay, Alfred. 
So Penelope, Rodolfo, and Alfred. And what do Penelope, Rodolfo, and Alfred have in common? Do they have any numbers in common? Yeah. 7 and 21, they, they have something in common, but Alfred doesn't have that. Right? Because, and it has to be something that they all three or all two or all four or however many are together. It has to be something they all have in common. So yes, they had a seven in common, but Alpha doesn't have a seven, so we don't count it. Uh, two U's, one U, one U, so they have a single U in common. And two T's, two T's, up oh, one T. Alfred's kind of, you know, lacking some stuff in me. But they have a U and a T in common. So we're going to take it away from them. If we do that, Penelope has still got seven, because we didn't take any numbers. She had two and two, so she's got one of each left. Um, Rodolfo keeps his 21. He had one U. We took it, so now it's gone. But he had two T's, so he still has a T left. And then poor Alfred, we took away his U and his T, so he's down to just being a 1, because UT divided by UT is 1. So when that happens, when whatever this last term is, or any term, if it's the same as your GCF, you replace it with 1. And then again, if you wanted to check, you would um, multiply it back in and make sure that it matched. And that's a UT on the end, it matches, it just splits teeny tiny UT. This, you only use factoring by grouping if you have four or more terms. Okay, you would not use grouping with the three terms. So when we go back to the last example with Penelope and Rudolfo and Alfred, we wouldn't use grouping even though these two have something in common. We're not going to split up a group of three. We only split up groups of four or more. Okay, so what we do is we're going to look at this and so okay i've got four eight three and six and they don't all have something in common so i'm going to break into groups of two okay and i'm going to do that based on what they have in common So basically, if I have four terms, I'm going to break them into groups of two that have something in common. And I can either ba base that off of like the numbers, I can base that off of the variables. I, there's more than one way, usually, to split your group up. For here, I've got four and eight and three and six. Four and eight have something in common, and three and six have something in common, so I'm going to break them right here. Group one and group two. Um, and I'm going to write my plus back in so I remember that the 3 is positive. But I'm breaking that into those two groups. Okay, so I'm going to do group 1 is blue, and group 2 is going to be purple. Oh, purple is probably too close to blue green. Okay, so I've broken these into two groups. Then I factor each group separately. Okay, so 4q and 8 have a 4 in common. Oh, wait, is that 8r? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 4q and 8r. They have a 4 and an r in common, don't they? So I can take the 4r out, and I'm left with 2q, no, not 2q. Sorry, 1q plus 2. Getting ahead of myself and saying the wrong number first. Okay, so 4qr, I take 4r away, I'm left with q. 8r, I divide 8 by 4, I get 2, and I took the r away. Okay, then I come back to my next group, and they have a 3 in common. So I factor that out. And I'm left with a Q, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay. 
If you have done this correctly, the parentheses match. Q plus 2, Q plus 2. Okay. So, does everybody agree that those match? Okay. So, those become one parenthesis. I just write one parenthesis. Basically what I'm doing is I'm factoring that Q plus 2 that both groups have in common away from them. So I take the Q plus 2 out. It becomes one parenthesis. And then the GCFs become another. So Q plus 2. And then for my next parenthesis, I do 4R. Well, actually, let me do it in the colors so it stays like 4R plus 3. If you foiled it back together, you'll get this. So um, we can try that real quick. If I, I'm going to do another page, though, because there's not really room here. Right, so if I FOIL, I do first, outside, inside, and then last. And we had started with, these two were switched. We started with 4QR plus 8R plus 3Q plus 6. But these are equivalent because the order can change because it's addition. So that's our check. The order changes is okay because it's addition and you can 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2 it doesn't matter what order we do it in so the order can change that's okay as long as each individual term matches the individual terms and the signs are all the same you're good does that make sense okay. so we'll come back here and we'll look at these guys I have an RN a 5n, a negative r, and a negative 5. So I could break these up in two ways. I could say, okay, I want to put the r's together and the 5's together. Or I want to put the ones with n's and the ones without n's together. Do you see how that there's two ways to split this up? And it doesn't matter which one you do, you'll get the same answer. Um, so what do you want to do? Do you want to put n's together or r's and 5's? Well, I can do, okay, so I can do Rn and minus R and then 5n and minus 5. Or I could do Rn and 5n and then negative R and negative 5. So I can split it by R's and 5's or I can split it by N's and not N's. Right here. No, that's R N. Oh. Sorry, yeah, that's R N. I guess it doesn't have enough space between it. Okay, it's an R and an N. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can split it either way. I'll just do them both, and then you can see that it's the same. Okay, so here I have R's, and I'm gonna here's my split, and here's my other split. Okay, and actually this is a good example because it's got change, sign changes on this one. But here I have R's in common. So if I take the R out, I'm left with N minus 1. And here I have 5's in common. So if I take the 5 out, I'm left with N minus 1. And my N minus 1's match. So I'm good there. And so I put that is one set of parentheses and the R plus 5 becomes the other set of parentheses. Okay. On this one, I have an N in common. So I can take that out and I'm left with R plus 5. And here, what do I have in common? The minus sign. 
Oops, sorry, that's not an N, that's an R. If I take the minus sign out, I'm left with R plus 5. And you see how both of these match? So I can pull out the R plus 5, and then N minus 1 becomes my other parenthesis. And even though these are in separate order, n minus 1 times r plus 5, or r plus 5 times n minus 1, these are the same. You get rn, 5n, negative r, and negative 5 from either of these. So just like addition order doesn't matter, 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2. 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. So there's no correct order for which set of parentheses has to come in front of the other one as long as the terms inside are correct. So this and this are equivalent. Okay. So if we look at here, this one, I have 3NP and 15P and I have 4N and negative 20 and minus 20. Um, I'm going to separate them here. Okay, so 3NP and 15P have a 3 and a P in common. And that leaves me an N and a 5. And then 4N and 20 have a 4 in common. And that leaves me with a negative N and a negative 5. And I did that on purpose because I should have taken the negative 4. Does that, do you see that? So if this happens and you say, okay, they have a 4 in common, you pull 4 out, and then you are left with opposite signs. So this should be positive, positive, but I have negative, negative. Then I need to go back and fix it and also pull out the negative. Does that make sense? And so instead of being a positive 4 that I pull out, it ends up being a negative 4 that I pull out. And so n plus 5 is one parenthesis, and 3p minus 4 is the other. So if you say you did this and then you look at those and you say, oh, they don't match, that's not true. They do match. You just have to continue to pull out something they have in common, which is the negative. Questions? Occur sometimes. Okay, and that's like like those would be additive inverses because when you add them together you get zero. You get sign changes. So oops, that's not what I meant to do. You get opposite signs. It's just easier to say that. Okay, so let's say I decide to break this here. Because these have 2 and M in common and those have 7 in common and I like that breaking. So I can factor out 2M from the first set and I am left with a K and minus 6. Okay, and when I come over here I have... 7 and I get 6 and minus k. And you see how these almost match? But they don't really match. I have k minus 6 or 6 minus k. So first we're going to factor the groups. And then when we have that almost match, but they have opposite signs. Okay, so K is positive, K is negative, 6 is negative, 6 is positive. See how the signs are opposite? We have to factor out a negative. Okay, so what I need to do I'll keep this first one 
exactly the same. And instead of a positive 7, I make this a negative 7. And when I do that, this becomes a negative 6 and a positive k. Because I took the negative away out. So it changes the signs. And then I'm going to rearrange if necessary. So instead of k, six, negative 6 plus k, I'm going to go ahead and make them match and do k minus 6 so that they're lined up nicely. You don't have to do this step, though. And then I pull, um, pull out the parentheses. So k minus 6. And then step 5 is use the GCFs for the other parentheses. So I have 2m and negative 7. Okay, so what will happen is you'll get they almost match. They don't quite match. And that the only difference will be the signs. You'll have a k and a 6, but positive, negative, negative, positive. It's just the signs that are opposite. And when that happens, you factor out a negative and make the signs match. Want to see another one? Or five or something. Okay. So here I'm going to split. Oh, uh, no, not black. Bright yellow. Bright yellow is a fun color. I'm going to split right there. C and 2CD have a C in common. So I'm left with 1 minus 2D when I take the C out. And 8D and 4 have a 4 in common. And if I take 4 from 8D, I'm left with 2D. And 4 from 4 gives me negative 1. And again, see they almost match. But I have a positive 1, a negative 1, a negative 2D, a positive 2D. So I have to factor out that negative. And so instead of a positive 4, I want a negative 4. So this part will stay the same. This becomes negative 2d plus 1, because I changed the signs. I took out the negative or the 4. So I can skip straight to this step if I want to, or I can rearrange that to make it match. Hold on, let me write that a little lower. Help if I grab the right tool. So again, I can skip straight to the um, because the signs match positive one, positive one, negative two d, negative two d. I can skip straight to that part. Or if you want to optionally. You can rearrange it first to make sure they match. You don't have to do that part, but if you need to do that part to make sure, then you can do that part. And then also, when I multiply these back together, if I foil these back together, I'll end up with this, what I started with. One more. Split those there. 3p and 2p squared have a p in common. And 18 and 27 have a 9 in common. Oh, well, that worked out. They were just rearranged. See that? Same signs, just rearranged. So if I just rearrange them, then they match. And we go. The property that tells us if x times y equals 0, then x equals 0 or y equals 0.
one of them at least has to equal zero, right? That makes sense? If you multiply two things together and the answer is zero, one of them had to be zero to start with. Okay. We use this to solve equations. Okay, so what I have is 2d plus 6 times 3d minus 5, 15 equals 0. So this is kind of like the x, and this is kind of like the y. And one of those has to equal 0 in order for the whole thing to equal 0. Does that make sense? So the first step would be to factor if necessary. Okay, this one's already factored, so we don't have to do that in this particular problem. The second step is to set each factor equal to zero. Now, these are the factors. 2d plus 6 is a factor, and 3d minus 15 is a factor. There's two factors there. So I set each one equal to zero. So 2d plus 6 equals zero. 3d minus 15 equals 0. Okay. Step 3 is to solve each new equation. So I subtract 6 from both sides, and I get 2d equals negative 6. And if I divide by 2, and I get that d is equal to negative 3. And then I come over here and I add 15 to both sides. And 3d is equal to 15. And I divide by 3. And d is equal to 5. Okay, now d can be negative 3 or d can be 5. It's either or. So I can list it like that with the word or. Or I can list it with commas. So negative 3, 5, like that. Or I can list it with a set notation, which is when I do these bracket thingies and say negative 3, comma, 5. So there's three ways to present the answer. If it's not already set equal to 0, then you have to set it equal to 0 first. So in this case, we're not equal to 0 yet, so I have to set it equal to 0. So in order to do that, I'm going to subtract 3c from both sides. And I'm going to get c squared minus 3c equals 0. Then I'm going to factor. c squared and 3c, you know, I'm going to move that a little bit higher so I don't run out of room. Um, Three C and C squared both have a C in common, yes? So I have C times C minus three equals zero. I have two factors here. Factor one, factor two. Two factors. So I'm gonna set each factor equal to zero. And then I'm going to solve. Okay, so c equals 0 and c minus 3 equals 0. That one's done. Easy. This one needs to be solved, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So c equals 3. And I personally like to use set notation for my answers, but again, there's a couple ways you can do it. 
Now, if you want to check yourself to make sure these are true, you can plug them back in. So if I plug 0 in, so let's just say, okay, was c squared equals 3c? And my choices were 0 and 3. If I plug in 0, I get 0 squared is equal to 3 times 0. 0 equals 0, that's true. If I plug in 3, I get 3 squared is equal to 3 times 3. 9 is equal to 9, that's true. So if you take each answer and you plug them back into the original thing, you'll get true statements, and then you'll know you got the right answer if you want to check yourself. Okay. Um, this one is already factored for us. So I have one factor, two factors. So I'm going to set those each equal to zero. Well, three times n equals zero, that makes n five, twelve, negative thirty-seven. Come on, somebody. zero. Anything times something equals zero, then that something has to be zero. And then n plus two equals zero, so I subtract two and I get n is equal to negative two. And so my answer will be zero and negative two. And again, if I plug those back in, I'll get a true statement. Okay, on d, I do have to factor it. 8 and 40 both have an 8 in common. b squared and b have a b in common, so I'm left with 2b minus 5. I set each of those equal to 0. If 8b is 0, that makes b 0. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And I'm going to get 2b equals 5. And then I'm going to divide by 2. And I'm going to get a fraction. And that's OK, because I'm allowed to. My answer is going to be 0 and 5 halves. Set it equal to 0. So I'm going to do x squared plus 10x equals 0. I just picked the 10x up and I moved it to the other side, so I changed it from a negative to a positive. So you can do it this way, or you can just pick it up and move it. Um, they have an x in common. Split it. Subtract the 10. And I get 0 and negative 10. Okay? Okay.